month at Jasper. Jasper Flock, Hamilton County Auditorium, downtown Jasper. Well, a pleasant good morning once again. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. It's now 5 a.m. Time now for Command Your Morning Prayer Line, live from the Upper Room Ministries Incorporated, 702 R.C. Davis Parkway, out of Waycross, Georgia, with the pastors, Pastor Samuel Sellers III and Evangelist Dr. Renee Sellers, the host of Command Your Morning Prayer Line. Comes your way Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. until 6 a.m. A recorded portion of the program in its entirety, 7 p.m. until 8 p.m. on the Glory Bound Train. And please listen online. Carry us wherever you go 24-7 at www.foxy97.com. And now, command your morning. It's on the air. I'm Warren Lee. Victorious Living Bible Institute, Incorporated, an affiliate of Christian Bible Institute and Seminary, a non-denominational Bible Institute founded as part of the Christian Education Department of the Upper Room Outreach Ministries, Incorporated. Based in Waycross, Georgia, BLBI has expanded now with an on-site campus in Kenya. Our mission is to equip men and women of God to be productive and functioning parts of the local body of Christ. VLBI provides affordable biblical education and leadership training for ministers, professionals, and laypersons. We will provide you with the skills, education, and character needed to effectively serve, equip, and shape the lives of others as they pursue excellence in Christian education, ministry, and leadership. Study on site at our Waycross campus or online in our learning center. Visit www.victoriouslbi.org. Call 1-833-884-8880. Join Evangelist Renee Sellers Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. on the prayer line. Command your morning with devotion, prayer, and pronouncement of daily affirmations by dialing 712-770-4010. That's 712-770-4010. And put in access code 266590. That's access code 266 Six five nine zero. Set the atmosphere for your day. Say what you want to see with Evangelist Renee Sellers, a facilitator and certified life coach, here on WHLJ Foxy ninety seven point five. Now simulcasting with Moultrie WHLJ AM fourteen hundred. For more information, call nine one two six seven zero zero three zero four. That's nine one two six seven zero zero three zero four. You can also visit the Upper Room Outreach Ministries Incorporated at www www.theupperroomwaycross.com Welcome Moultrie, Berlin, Doron, Papasu, and all of the towns in between. You, you are listening to WHLJ 97.5 FM. Simulcasting with WHLJ AM 1400, Moultrie, Georgia. Good morning, everybody. This is Evangelist Renee Sellers of the Upper Room Outreach Ministries in Waycross, Georgia, and we are live at 5 for this Command Your Morning broadcast. We're coming to you live on WHLJ 97.5 FM, Valdosta, Georgia, simulcasting live on WHLJ 1400 AM Moultrie, also online at Foxy, F-O-X-Y, 97.com. Join us on the call this morning at 712 770 Four zero one zero access code two six six five nine zero. Get the recap tonight at seven p.m. on WHLJ. Visit our school's website at victoriouslbi.org and visit our podcast and find out what's going on at the upper room at the upper room waycross dot. Com. That website has been upgraded. It's time for an upgrade. And so, therefore, you can still visit and see what's going on at the Upper Room in Waycross, Georgia. As we prepare to get into our devotion this morning, I'm going to share what I shared with uh, the, those in Bible study on last night. I wasn't even planning on teaching. We were just going to get prepared for our Thanksgiving community dinner on this weekend. But we got into a discussion, and so, so the, the discussion on slander came up last night. And so today I am going to talk to you about slander, a robber of a good name. Oh, God, I'm feeling that already. Slander, the robber of a good name. But before we get into that, I am going to ask 
Evangelist Paulette Griffin to lead us in a word of opening prayer. And while she's praying, I encourage you to wake somebody up and tell them to get up live at 5. You need to hear what the word of the Lord is for this morning. Evangelist Paulette Griffin, lead us this morning, if you can, in a word of opening prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you glory, we give you praise, and we thank you for this day. We thank you for another opportunity to be able to come before thy throne room of grace. Thank you for watching over us as we slept and slumbered, awaken us in our right minds, for breathing new life into us, Lord God, that we have become a living net fish to be able to glorify and to praise thy holy name. We thank you and we praise you, Lord God, for watching over us as we slept and slumbered, Lord God. We thank you for the open heaven that you provided, Lord God. We thank you for each and every family represented upon this line, every ministry right now, Lord God. We give you glory and praise for the Upper Room Outreach Ministries, Lord God, Pastor Samuel, Evangelist Manet Sellers, for bringing forth Commandment Morning prayer line here on Foxy 97.5 FM, Simon Casting with 1400 AM out of Moultrie, Georgia. We thank you for another day and another opportunity to say, Lord, you're worthy of glory. You're worthy of praise. As your word has said, cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way when I shall walk for it. I lift up my soul unto thee, Lord God. Heavenly Father, you said if we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord God, we come right now, Lord God, laying everything down and defeated Jesus, casting all of our cares upon thee, Lord God, for we know that you care for us, Lord God. Heavenly Father, we ask that you search us and know our hearts, try us and know our very thought. If you find anything in us, Lord God, wicked or displeasing, anything that will hinder us, Lord God, from being able to give you a pure and perfect praise, Lord God, we ask that you remove it now. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, wash us clean by the blood of Jesus, by the blood of the Lamb, Lord God, for we are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, Lord God, and we shall walk forth in victory and in praise. We thank you for this day. We thank you for another opportunity, Lord God. Heavenly Father, to come from the north, the south, the east, and the west together in your name, Lord God, to learn more of your word, Lord God. Heavenly Father, that we'll be able to be true vessels of honor that you called us to be. And, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for each and every one, Lord God. And, Heavenly Father, we ask that you watch over those that may be on their beds of affliction at this time, Lord God. Breathe new life into them right now, Lord God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the healing and the restoration as we plead the blood of Jesus for divine healing. That flow through our bodies, Lord God, that we'll be able to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto thee, which is our reasonable service. And, Heavenly Father, we desire right now, Lord God, that you continue to move by thy grace and power. Open up our spiritual minds, ears, and hearts to receive thy word this day, that it may be planted upon good ground to come up into fruition as you called it to be. We'll be careful to give you glory and honor for all that you've done and what you're yet to do. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, woman of God. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. And we give God glory. Our subject today on this Think About It Thursday, and it's something that we really need to think about because uh, my husband is uh, really shared something with me several years ago about some conversations I was having with some people. And he said, if you're not careful, it's going to turn into gossip. He said, if you talk, well, what he was saying is, I know that you're, sharing your heart and you're pouring your heart out. I know that you're just confiding in somebody. But if you're not careful, that can turn into gossip. And then I went to a meeting in Jacksonville, and this person, all they wanted to do was ask the, 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 meeting, the leader of the meeting a question, but the question was about somebody else. And then he said that he told somebody else some time ago, he said they came to me wanting to talk to me about somebody else, and I told them I will not entertain your gossip. Oh, God, I would not entertain your gossip. And so that there, what my husband said and what this man said, let me know how easy it is to fall into gossip. Sometimes you can entertain gossip unintentionally. You can entertain gossip unintentionally, so we have to be careful. And a lot of times, if you know that a person is a gossiper and they always like to talk about other people, maybe you need to separate yourself from them to keep yourself out of trouble. Did I just say that? I did, and I, and I won't take it back. If you, you, whoever that person is, if you know you're around a person and all they want to do is talk about other people in order to keep yourself, listen, talk to them about their behavior. And if they're not willing to change, you may, may need to change your circle of friends. Can somebody help me help the people today that if they are not willing to change, 
then you may need to change your circle of friends. Proverbs chapter 6. I'm going to be reading it from the contemporary English version, and I may go back and forth to the King James. But Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 says that there are six or seven kinds of people. The the CEV says people. Oh, God. It says people. I'm going to go back to the King James for those that don't understand the King James, but I want to read it from the CEV. It says there are six or seven kinds of people the Lord doesn't like. Those who are too proud or tell lies or murder. And this is the thing about murder. Do you realize you can murder people with your tongue? That's when slander, gossip, and rumors come in. What are you doing with slander, gossip, and rumors? You are, you are killing people's reputation. Let me keep reading. It says that there are six or seven kinds of people the Lord doesn't like, those who are too proud or tell lies or murder, those who make evil plans or are quick to do wrong, those who tell lies in court or stir up trouble in a family. Let's go to King James on this. Starting at verse 16, Proverbs 6, 16. There are six things that the Lord hates. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. And I said last night that, you know, we say uh, uh, homosexuality, that's an abomination. And we, we judge people who are homosexuals and we, and we, because it's an abomination. And we bring that up. We bring up that scripture. And a lot of times we use scripture to beat people up about their lifestyle. But listen, have you, listen, have you ever thought of the fact that your lying tongue is an abomination? Did I just say that? Did you, have you ever thought about that lie that you told and that lie? in spirit God hates and so a proud look and I, I signed up for a class by John Eckhart on, on the, the king of pride Leviathan I gotta go back and get the replay because I was in Bible study when the class was going on last night but Leviathan is something that I encourage the people to understand because the king of pride and, and when somebody has that the spirit called a, a Leviathan you, you can't tell them anything they, 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 they know to do something right and they don't want to do it and I'm going to get deeper into that study tonight with John Eckhart on Leviathan the king of pride where the Lord hates a proud look he hates a lying tongue Hands that shed innocent blood, murder. A heart that devises wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies. Can somebody say slanderer, gossiper, somebody that spreads rumors, and he that soweth discord among brethren? Because you do realize that slander and gossip and rumors also create division and discord among people. God hates slander, and we always want to talk about other sins that God hates, but we rarely talk about slander, and probably because so many of us engage in it, and often without even realizing it. Romans 1 and 30, Paul talks about slander uh, being the behavior of those who hate God. Let's look at Romans 1 and 30 this morning, being the behavior of those who hate God. Let's look at it in the King James. It says in the King James that backbiters hate. Let's go back to verse 28 of Romans chapter 1. It says, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, uh, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Let me read it from the CEB. I want to read that last part. Uh, Romans 1, and let's go down to verse 32. Well, 31, 30, uh, verse 30, that they, they gossip, they say cruel things about others, slander, gossip, they're comparable. 
saying cruel things about others, gossip, slander, they go together. And it says that they gossip, say cruel things about others, and hate God. They are proud, conceited, and boastful, always thinking up new ways to do evil. These people don't respect their parents. They are stupid, unreliable, and don't have any love or pity for others. They know God has said that anyone who acts this way deserves to die, but they keep on doing evil things, and they even encourage others to do them. They even encourage others to do them. And James chapter 3, verse 15 through 16 talks about this behavior being demonic behavior. Let's take a look at James chapter 3, verse 15 through 16, CEV, verse 15 through 16. It says, this kind of wisdom doesn't come from above. It is, let's go back to 13. Are any of you wise or sensible? Then show it by living right and being humble and wise in everything you do. But if your heart is full of bitter jealousy and selfishness, and many times the root of that slanderous conversation, the root of gossip and the root of, of rumors is bitter jealousy. Ugh. Is jealousy. And it says, but if your heart is full of bitter jealousy and selfishness, don't brag or lie to cover up the truth. This kind of wisdom doesn't come from above. It is earthly and selfish and comes from the devil himself. And so James is telling us what this kind of, the root of this kind of behavior, it is demonic. Slander is demonic, and so therefore, whenever people are jealous or selfish, they cause trouble and do all sorts of cruel things, including trying to destroy somebody else's good name. So we're talking about the robber of a good name being slander. What is slander? Slander is robbing another person of the treasure of a good name. And I, I was walking around and, and meditating on this this morning, and, and, and I've heard our apostle talk about this so many times. Even if we hear what we hear about another person is true, our motive for repeating it must be evaluated. Somebody needs to write that down. Even if what we hear about another person is true, our motive for repeating it must be evaluated. I almost missed out on a great relationship with another woman of God because I let somebody else tell me something negative about them. But when I got to know that person for myself, I began to repent for even listening to somebody else. And there are a lot of people listening to me today that need to repent for even listening to the negative conversation about somebody else because ministries have been destroyed, marriages have been destroyed, families have been divided because somebody else listened to you talk about somebody else connected to you. Oh, come on, somebody. And so I almost missed out on a great relationship because I let somebody feed me negative information. And so whenever someone says something about another person that is not true, that results in damaging that person's reputation, whether that conversation, whether that person intended to do it or not, it is still slander. Whether that person intended to do it or not, it is still slander. The definition that I just read says it's something that results in damaging someone else's reputation. So once again, you can destroy another person's reputation even though that was not your intention. You're just having a casual conversation, and then somebody else brings up somebody else's name, and then you are, you are creating in their minds a negative opinion about another person unfairly. And now you got that other person looking at the person you talked about the wrong way. That is not fair to them. Sometimes that innocent conversation that we engage in regarding another person can tarnish the way you think or see that individual. And they may never have even thought about that person that way until you said something about them. They may never have even thought about it. And I said last night, even some of the things that we read and hear in the news, we got to be careful that we don't take it. Listen, listen, that we be careful about how we respond to it because I have written things for the newspaper and they still wrote it wrong. Can somebody help me say amen? I have written it myself. I emailed it and I read it back in the newspaper and they still got some information wrong. And so, therefore, even what you read in the newspaper, you got to be careful about whether or not about what we believe 
We got to be careful about what we repeat. So how many people have family members that don't talk to you anymore because of what somebody else said to them about you? That's not fair. How many people have businesses that could be a lot further along, but because somebody says something negative about you, you're struggling to get your business off the ground? That is not fair. How many people have people who are supposed to be at your church, but they are not at your church because of rumors, lies, gossip, and slander? That is not fair to you. And I said last night for every individual that is supposed to be at Upper Room and is not because of what somebody else said, that individual is going to have to give an account to God for every person that is supposed to be there and not because of slander. You have to give an account for every individual that is supposed to sow into your life and did not because of slander. They're going to have to give an account for every person that's supposed to be doing business with you and is not because of slander. And so, therefore, slander has a powerful but poisonous effect on the life of another person. Please write that down and remember it as you go about your day. Remember it the next time you talk on the phone and somebody wants to talk to you about somebody else. Remember it the next time you're in Walmart and somebody comes to you and say, did you hear about such such and such a so-and-so? The next time somebody comes to you, remember that slander has a powerful but poisonous effect on the life of another individual. Don't be a party to injecting poison. And so what the strategy of the enemy is is to divide and to deter and to derail the mission of the church because the mission of the church is to love one another. And are we truly demonstrating the love of God? When we try to destroy somebody else's name, are we truly uh, demonstrating the love of God when we leave church? And even before we walk walk off the church ground, we're talking about Sister Susie. Are we truly demonstrating the love of God with our conversations? Slander can have a lot of masks. And sometimes we pass on slanderous information that seems like harmless hearsay, but the effect on the person listening to it can leave them with an unfairly negative perception of the person that you're talking about. And sometimes we think that, you know, by making someone else look bad that we're making ourselves look better. But can I help somebody today? As my husband will often say, when a person talks to me about somebody else, they're not telling me about the other person. They're really telling me to watch out for them. When you come to me, especially, and one thing about Upper Room, we do not allow people to come to our church and tear down their previous leader. Because guess what? If they're going to tear down that previous pastor, then they, when they leave you, they're going to do you the same way. So you got to watch that. If you don't want that done to you, then don't allow it to be entertained. So pastor will say, that, listen, it tells me everything I know about that person. When they come to me talking about another individual, that tells me I need to stay away from you. That tells me I need to watch you. That tells me I need to be mindful of you. And my question is, why is it that we even spend time listening to this stuff? I was in the church, and the woman of God said, I think you're a sweet person, no matter what other people say. And so I quickly walked away from her because, listen, you're telling me what I need to know about you because you took time to listen to them. And so there are times when we really do have a genuine concern, but is it helpful to share that with somebody who can do nothing to help the situation? We do this because even subconsciously, as I was preparing this morning, I thought about this thing, that we do this because even subconsciously we still want them to think the worst of that person. 
I need somebody to, to, to watch this and write this down for yourself. Tell somebody, don't rob me of my good name because there's something about me you don't like. Don't rob me of my good name because you're jealous of something that I'm doing. Listen, everything I'm doing, you're capable of doing. Don't rob me of my good name because you don't like me. And, and let me help you. There are some times that, if, that people have a misunderstanding. There are some times that people uh, have been fed stuff about another person, but yet you take it and you take it and you run with it. Can I ask you? question, when are we going to start going to the person face to face and addressing it with the source? Instead of running with it and destroying another person's reputation in the process, when are we going to go to the, go with what the Bible says when it comes to resolving conflict and go to that person one-on-one, go to them face to face, go to them just the two of you? So no matter how the discussion goes, injecting poisonous words about another person is unfairly and unjustly devaluing their reputation. Proverbs 22 and 1, it says that a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, and favor is better than silver and gold. And in this text, a good name is talking about a person's character. And a person's character is probably the most valuable thing about a person's identity. And so a good name is who we are in the minds of other people. And whenever we handle a person's name, who they are in the minds of other people, we are being stewards of a treasure that belongs to them. And therefore, if we damage their reputation, we are stealing their good name. We're stealing they're a good name. And let me help you. When something is stolen, it is very difficult to get it back, if we get it back at all. When something is stolen, it's stolen, including your reputation, it is very difficult to get it back. It's going to take time to get it back. For a lot of people, it takes years to get it back, if they ever get it back at all. Let's hit stop and take a quick break for station ID. We are live at 5 on WHLJ. FM by Doster, Georgia. Simulcasting live on WHLJ, 1400 AM Moultrie. Also online at Foxy, F-O-X-Y, 97.com. You can join us on the call this morning at 712-770-4010, access code 266-590. Get the recap tonight on WHLJ at 7 p.m. So we're talking about slander, the robber of a good name. Titus 3 and 2. Titus chapter 3, verse 2. I'm going to read it from the King James first, and then I'm going to go to the CEV. Titus 3 and 2. It says, okay, let's go back to verse 1. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle and showing all meekness unto all men. Let me read that from the CEV. Let's go to verse 2. And not say cruel things or argue. They should be gentle and kind to everybody. Matthew 12 and 36, and I said last night, if we keep this scripture in front of us all the time, we'll be mindful of the conversations that we have about other people. And I said last night, too, that probably one of the reasons we have so much division and so much discord and so much gossip and rumors and slanders, people may not be, people just ain't reading their Bible. Because Matthew 12 and 13 says, I'm sorry, 36, Matthew 12 and 36, I'm going to read it from the King James. And and my kids laugh at me because they keep saying, Mama, still thinking about that big screen. Because when I read this text, I think about all my words being put on a big screen for everybody who, who, listen, for everybody that I ever engaged in conversation about to see. And so that, listen, I'm going to be, be, be transparent. I have, I have made the mistake of engaging in the wrong kind of conversations. And I had to be careful. I said this in the beginning. My husband said, if you're not careful, it could turn into gossip. And the same thing goes for any of us. If we are not careful, those casual conversations could turn into gossip. Matthew 12, 36. 
So I remind myself of that big screen. You know, it may not be a big screen, but that's the way, I, I, you know, that helps me help me. <laughs> oh, God. In Matthew twelve thirty six, but I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Verse 37 says, For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be con- condemned. I want to read it from the CEB. Matthew twelve thirty six and 37. I promise you, on the day of judgment, everyone will have to give account for every careless word <laughs> they have spoken. On that day, they will be told they are either innocent or guilty because of the things they have said. Because of the things they have said. <laughs> First Peter two and one. I'm laughing because I'm I'm laughing at myself. <laughs> Picturing that big screen. <laughs> oh, First Peter two and one. Stop being hateful because you realize that, that, that this slanderous mentality, these gossiping rules, it's really a hateful, it's demonic, and it's really a hateful, it's a hater mentality. <laughs> it's a hater mentality. And I said last the other week, I, I, I believe, I, I can't, maybe I'm not getting my own words uh, together, but I said something like this, that you got to be careful because about who you are and knowing who you are, be, and don't say, re, be careful how you respond to your haters because the reason they're hating on you is because they themselves know what you're capable of doing. And I asked the question, do you know what you're capable of doing? And so the scripture says in the CEV, First Peter 2 and 1, stop being hateful. Quit trying to fool people and start being sincere. Don't be jealous or say cruel things about others. Don't be jealous or say cruel things about others. So how do we get away from this slanderous mentality? How can we help one another fight this slanderous behavior? Well, first of all, when somebody approaches you with an issue about another person, ask them, have you taken the time to talk to them? Have you gone to that person directly? Because today, instead of going to people directly, we, I know that we can use social media for, to, to be a witness for Jesus Christ for a lot of good things, but there are people that are using social media to slander other people, even sometimes without using their name in the post. you got to be careful even when you don't use, and, and I'm being careful even when I, I share my testimonies because I don't want to be guilty of slandering somebody even in my testimony, even though I don't mention anybody's name, because it is possible to do that. And so, therefore, your Facebook post is slandering somebody, even if you're not using their name. Why? Because, it's, it, because you reveal the intention or the motive of your heart, even if you don't reveal their name. And so have you talked to this person about the situation? And it, it, listen, if you want me to, I'll go with you. And I said this on last night that a lot of times, you know, listen, the last thing most people want to do is talk to the individual. Why? Because we have impure motives for talking about it in the first place. That's why we don't want to go to the person face-to-face, because we want them to look bad in the eyes of others. But is that the attribute of a believer or a follower of Jesus Christ is to try to make people look bad? And so another thing you need to ask them, you know, do I really need to hear this? Is this something I really need to know? Because sometimes we can reveal things that we really, you know, we reveal things that the other person, they they can't help you, they can't help you resolve it, and now you share something with them as a confidant. But guess what? Can I help you? Every confidant has a confidant. I need somebody to help me say amen. Everybody has somebody that they talk to. And so, therefore, you got to be careful about who you trust with your conversations. And for some of us, The only one you can really trust is God. And so is this something that you need to know? 
Are you doing everything you can to resolve this issue with this other person? The Bible talks about in Ephesians 4 and 31, putting away all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander. Are you doing everything you can to resolve whatever issues you have with this other person? If we're not going to do anything we can to resolve the issue, well, let's stop talking about it. Let's take it to the Lord in prayer. Let's get this thing off our chest. Let's renounce any negative emotions or attitudes that we have against another person. How can I help you change this conversation and keep you from messing up this other person's name? Now, there are times that, you know, we talk about confidentiality and psychology. And, if you know, it's not slander when someone is abusing a child and you have to report it. It's not slander. When someone has a is is uh, uh you hear them beating their wife every night, and you call the police, but you got to be able to understand that listen if somebody's life is in jeopardy, there's are there are times when you can break confidentiality because because if that child is being abused and, and they die and you didn't report it, then that blood is on your hands. So there are times when that is not slander. That is trying to trying to Help somebody keep their life. But when you know that something you're saying is not helpful and has a possibility of robbing somebody of their reputation, be careful. As James 1.19 says, be slow to speak. So we have to understand that slander is a serious thing when it comes to God. And every one of us is going to have to give an account of every careless word that proceeds out of our mouths. Don't rob me of my good name because there's something about me that you don't like. Don't rob me of my reputation because we had a misunderstanding that could have easily been resolved had we talked face to face. Don't rob me of my reputation because I, I, I addressed something that was going on with you and you didn't like the way I addressed it. Don't rob my ministry of the people who are supposed to be there because you don't like the way I did or said something. Don't rob me of, a, of, 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 the, of the flourishment of my business because you used to work for me, you didn't do your job and got fired. Don't rob my, my family of their unity because there's something about me that you don't like. So we got to be careful that we don't steal people's good name through slander and gossip, even if what we hear is true, even if you see it on the news, even if you read it in the newspaper. What is our motive for repeating it must be evaluated. That's all we have time for today. I am going to ask evangelist Paul Darlene Gant to take us in with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful, Father, to come before you this morning, Lord. Father, we lift your name up on high. We give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. Father, we thank you, Father, for another opportunity to pray, Father. We thank you, Father, for another opportunity, Father, to be in fellowship this morning, Lord. Father, we thank you for each and every person that's on this line this morning, Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Dr. Renee bringing such an awesome devotional before us this morning, Lord. Heavenly Father, and we pray today, Father, that what we have heard, Father, that we will put it in practice, Father, that we will abhor the very appearance of evil, Father. Oh, Father, we be careful, Father, the things that we say and do, Lord. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning, Father, asking you, Father, oh, Father, that you will give us a deeper understanding, Father, and draw us closer to you, Father, through prayer and through studying your word, Father, cleansing our hearts, Father, renewing our minds each and every day, Father. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful, Father. Oh, Father, help us understand, Father, that our relationship with you is, is important 
important, Lord, and that we put you first, consider you in all our ways, Lord, so that you can direct our path. Heavenly Father, we pray today to be faithful and obedient in our Christian walk, Father. Oh, Father, we thank you, Lord, Father, for your word cannot lie. Father, in every word that you that you said, Father, is true. And, Father, we seek you today, Father, so that we can take your word and apply it to our life every day, Father. Oh, Father, being faithful to you, Lord, Father, and understanding, Father, that you are almighty God, all-powerful. Oh, Father, there is none like you. Oh, Father, no matter how we search, Father, we can never find none like you, Lord. Father, you love us, Father, in spite of, Father, the things that we do wrong, Father, but you don't love our sin. Heavenly Father, so we pray today, Father, Oh, Father, that you will fill us, Father, with a deeper desire, oh, Father, to walk in holiness, Father, and always seeking you first, Father, considering you, Father, asking you, Father, oh, Father, before we make decisions, Lord, oh, Father, help us to recognize, Father, oh, Father, every area in our life, Father, that we need to surrender to you, Father, in repentance, Father, so that we can grow, Father, in godliness and gain strength, Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray today, Father, oh, Father, we cause harm to anyone, Father, with our words, Father, and cause relationships to be broken, Lord. Oh, Father, we ask you, Father, to forgive us. Heavenly Father, we ask you, Father, oh, Father, to give us the right words to say, Father. Help us to choose our words wisely, Father, as we go to them, Father, and try to make amends for the things that we've done. Father, we pray, Father, for forgiveness, Father. And we pray, Father, Heavenly Father, that they will forgive us, Father. Heavenly Father, thank you, Father, for hearing, Father. Oh, Father, the truth, Father, and realizing, Father. Oh, Father, that we can do so much harm, Father, to others, Lord. We thank you today, Lord. Heavenly Father, we bless your name, Father. Lord, we have a desire to be peacemakers, Father. Oh, Father, put a burning desire down on the inside of us, Father, that we will want to walk in love at all times, Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray, Father. Oh, Father, for you, Father. Oh, Father, we get all, hallelujah, all the glory, Father. Oh, Father, when our ways are pleasing unto you, Father. Oh, Father, we know that you make our enemies be at peace with us, Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray today for marriages, Lord. Lord, to be healed, Lord. We pray, Father, that couples' eyes will come open, Father, and they will see the deception of Satan, Father, how he's out to destroy families, huh? Oh, Father, how he's out, Father, to plant a seed of doubt in their hearts, Father, that they doubt one another, not trust one another. Heavenly Father, we ask you today, Father, oh, Father, we know that you are restored, Lord. Oh, Father, we know, Father, that you are a healer, Father, of all the wounded hearts, Father. Oh, Father, you can heal the emotions, Father, the hurts, Lord. Oh, Father, allow forgiveness to come in their hearts, Father. So, Father, we are praying for marriages to be restored, Father, and for families, hallelujah, to be knitted together stronger than before, Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray today that a conviction, huh, oh, Father, be on every person in each church, Father, for unconfessed sin, Father. Oh, Father, that we have a conviction, Father, to repent, Father, and do that which is pleasing unto you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you today, Father. Oh, Father, we thank you for our leaders in our churches, Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you to raise up leaders in every church, Father, that will call their members to holiness, Father, and not com- compromise the truth, Lord. Father, please pour out your spirit huh, in our churches, Lord. Oh, Father, in this nation, Lord, and give us a desire. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, to go out into the hedges and the highways and win souls for your kingdom, Father. Break down all the barriers in the body of Christ that hinder. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, great move of the Holy Spirit among us, Lord. Heavenly Father, please send a revival, Father. We pray for revival to come over this nation, Lord. Oh, Father, that our children will be saved, Father. Oh, Father, that many that we are crying out for, Father. Oh, Father, that you will draw them, Lord. Oh, Father, we ask you, Father, to draw them, Lord, Father. Oh, Father, draw them, Father. Oh, Father, them that don't know you're in the pardon of their sins, Father, we ask you to draw them, Lord. Oh, Father, bring a conviction over them, Father. Oh, Father, we pray today for all of those that are sick physically. Oh, Father, spiritually and mentally to receive healing in the name of Jesus, Father. Oh, Father, for we know, Father, there is nothing impossible for you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask that you will touch bodies today, Father. Let them feel your powerful presence, Lord. Oh, Father, let them feel your power, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, from the crown of their head down to the sole of their feet, Father. Oh, Father, embrace them, Lord. Huh? Oh, Father, someone needs an embrace from you, Lord, knowing, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, that there is a 
difference, Father. Oh, Father, touch, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, touch hearts today, Lord. Heal hearts, Lord. Oh, Father, touch minds. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, restore the thinking process the way that it should be. Heal tumors, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we pray today, Father. Oh, Father, for every organ of the body, Father, to function as you created it to, for the circulation to be as you created it to, Lord. Oh, Father, wake up on dead bones, my God. Oh, Father, bones, hallelujah. Oh, Father, bring life back into them, Lord. Oh, Father, they'll move, hallelujah, the way that you created them to, Lord. Oh, Father, for we know you to be a healer. Oh, Father, we know that you are a healer, Father, and there's nothing you cannot do. Heavenly Father, we thank you today, Father. Oh, Father, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we pray that you know that we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. We're not just loving you with words, Father, but we surrender everything we got to you, Lord. Oh, Father, we need you to make a move in this nation, Father. Oh, Father, in our communities, Father. Oh, Father, all the killing that's going on, Father. Oh, Father, we need a mighty move of you, my God. Oh, Father, so we cry out, Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you, Father, as we go out, Father. Oh, Father, lead us and guide us into where we should go. Oh, Father, lead us in what we should say. Oh, Father, enable us to be a help, Father. Oh, Father, make resources available that we can help others, Father. Oh, Father, that we may draw them, Lord, that they can see love, hallelujah. Oh, Father, radiating, Father. Oh, Father, as we represent you, Father, let the love, hallelujah, radiate from us, Father, to them, Father. Heavenly Father, we pray today, Father, that you will watch over our children, Lord. Oh, Father, they're traveling to school, Father. Oh, Father, wherever they may be, Lord, hallelujah, our small children, our adult children, Lord. Oh, Father, send angels to be with them, Father. Let angels encamp all around them, Father. Keep with a hedge of protection around them, Lord. Oh, Father, we're praying for the schoolhouse, Lord. We're praying for the faculty and the staff, Lord. Oh, Father, we're praying, Father. Oh, Father, the safety be in the schools, Father, on the grounds, Lord. Huh? Oh, Father, loose angels, Father, warring angels, Father. Oh, Father, to fight the demonic forces that will destroy her. Huh? Oh, Father, the forces that come to kill, my God. Huh? Oh, Father, we ask you today, Father. Huh? Oh, Father, to loose those angels, Father. Oh, Father, on the highways to stop the accidents, Lord. Huh? Oh, Father, we thank you today, Father. Oh, Father, we realize that you've been... Father, you've been so kind, Lord. Huh? We take nothing for granted, my God. Huh? Oh, Father, we say thank you, Lord. Huh? Thank you, Father, for keeping us, Father. Thank you, Lord, for a brand new day, Lord. Oh, Father, with brand new mercies. Huh? Oh, Heavenly Father, we give you glory today. Huh? Oh, Father, we thank you for Mr. Lee and his staff. Huh? And WHLJ 97.5 Foxy FM, Father. Oh, Father, we thank you for them allowing this broadcast to go forth today, Father. Oh, Father, we thank you for every ear that is listening, Father. Oh, Father, we give your praise today, Lord. Oh, Father, we ask you, Father, to let us to see a change, Father. Oh, Father, as we press and pray, Father. Oh, Father, as we pray without ceasing, my God. Oh, Father, cause a change in the atmosphere, my God. Oh, Father, we know that prayer is powerful, my God. And Heavenly Father, we are praying and crying out. Oh, Father, for a change to take place, Lord. Heavenly Father. Father, we give you the praise today. Oh, Father, we thank you for all of our church leaders, our pastors. Oh, Father, we ask in your Lord, Father, to bless them, Father. Bless them, Lord. Make ways out of no way for them, Father. Oh, Father, let them be surrounded by people with love, huh? Oh, Father, give them wisdom, Father. Oh, Father, sharpen their senses, Father, that they will see and know, huh? Oh, Father, those things, Father. Oh, Father, that are good, Father. Oh, Father, they'll know that which is evil, my God, huh? Heavenly Father, we ask you, Father to watch over them and keep them safe in their families, Lord. Oh, Father, bless them abundantly, Father, in their health, Father, and in their wealth, my God. Heavenly Father, we give you all the praise today, Father. Oh, Father, for you, Father, are our Father, and we trust you in everything, Father. Lead us and guide us in this day, Father. Oh, Father, we pray, Father. Oh, Father, that we, Father, oh, Father, will be who you called us out to be, your people, and the sheep of your pasture, Father. And all of these blessings, Father, we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we give you glory. Oh, Father, amen. And if there's anyone that has listened in this morning, 
and they have heard a word that has touched their heart. Oh, Father, we pray today, Father, that somebody that listened in, if you listen in and you said today is your day, Today is your day that you don't want to live like you've been living. You don't want to go back to an abusive situation. You don't want to go back to an addiction. You don't want to go back, Father, to the life of sin. We are praying today that you will repeat this, this, this prayer, this sinner's prayer, salvation prayer after me, and that as you repeat this prayer, that God will prick your heart and he will change the very core of who you are. Oh, we thank you today for listening. Father, it is written in your word that if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, and I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Therefore, Father, I confess that Jesus is my Lord, and I make him Lord of my life. Right now, today, I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. I renounce my past life with Satan and close the door to any of his devices. I thank you for forgiving me of all my sins. Jesus is my Lord, and I am a new creation. All things have passed away. Now all things have become new in Jesus' name. If you repeated that prayer after me, we welcome you to the body of Christ. We welcome you because we know that God has truly changed your heart. Oh, we thank you today. We welcome you, sister or brother. We say that we love you and we're so thankful to have you. And we ask you today that you will seek after a church, belong to a church, join a church where you can learn more about God, that you can grow in your relationship with him. You can grow in grace and godliness and learn his word. We say thank you once again for listening, and thank you for joining this body. We love you, and you have a a wonderful life in growing in Christ. And at this time, we will return this line back to none other than Dr. Renee Sellers of the Upper Room Outreach Ministries. Amen. Thank you so much, woman of God. God bless everybody. God keep your heaven smile upon you. I pray that this has ministered to your heart today as we talked about slander, the robber of a good name, that we not be parties or contributors to destroying somebody else's name, even unintentionally. So the Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verses 4 and 5, For every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. If you believe that, you can begin to decree and declare that I am chosen by God. Uh, I am blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. I am a child of God today. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am the apple of God's eye. I am careful about the words that proceed out of my mouth. I will not engage in ungodly conversations today. I'll be careful, Lord God, in the name of Jesus to honor you even with my words. I am accepted in the beloved today. I am redeemed through the blood of Jesus. I am a person of wisdom and prudence. I am saved by the grace grace of God. I am seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I am God's workmanship, his handiwork. I am more than a conqueror. I am an overcomer. I am a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new in Jesus' name. I am a citizen of heaven, and I am seated in heavenly places even now. I am a partaker of the promises of God. I am strengthened with might and by, by the Spirit of God. I allow Christ to dwell in my heart by faith. I I am rooted and grounded in love. I speak the truth of love. I am renewed in the spirit of my mind. I am a follower of Jesus Christ. I walk in love today. I will praise the Lord today, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am light in the Lord. I walk circumspectly. I am filled with the Holy Spirit. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am healed. I am free. I am salt. I am light. I am conscious. Consecrated, I am sanctified, and I am victorious. To God be the glory for the things that he has done. To God be the glory for this devotion on today. If you're not busy Saturday and you're in the Waycross area and you'd like to join us in feeding the community, uh, we'll be doing
on our annual 11th annual Thanksgiving community dinners on Saturday from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. at the Upper Mount Reach Ministry at no charge to you. Come by and get a hot meal. If you like to donate, you're not in the area and you like to contribute, you can go to our Upper Room um, website, theupperroomwaycross.com, and click on the link to give. Make sure you put in the note, Thanksgiving. Uh, sow a seed into what we're doing. Also, our graduation for our first Victorious Living Bible Institute class is December the 9th at 5 p.m. Our spring semester begins January 14th. Visit our website at victoriouslbi.org and apply today. God bless you. God keep you. Heaven smile upon you. Be encouraged. Those on the call, please remain on the line. <laughs> 